today we have with us Professor uh, J.S. Seni, and it is my proud privilege to introduce Professor Sir to the August gathering. Uh, Professor Seni has retired from this very institute and has been the head of the Entrepreneurship Development and Industrial Coordination Department. He has also headed the position of the head of the Department for uh, Rural Development and IMCO Department and has been Dean of Extension Services and Consultants. Mm -hmm. So he has more than 34, 35 years of experience in Nitter Chandigarh itself and has been also consultant uh, at uh, uh, Nitko Guwahati. And uh, he has attended uh, lots of national and international training courses in entrepreneurship, micro enterprises, promotion, uh, outcome based education, industry institute, interaction, and uh, skill development and management of disabilities. He has been very exhaustively uh, involved in NBA related activities at institute level and has been the committee member and chairman of the various NBA teams to the uh, various colleges engineering colleges and central universities and NITs also. He has published more than 125 papers and journals of repute and he has in his name 15 textbooks and 20 modules. Sir has been a member of research degree committee of Punjab University and he has supervised four PhD scholars and some are in uh, pipeline and he is also a member of AICT Expert Committee and AICT National Steering Committee for promoting internship and also AICT nominee member of BOG of AITH uh, Kanpur. Sir is recipient of Babson Entrepreneurship Research Scholarship from University, Huston University in USA and also recipient of Lose Braille Helen Keller Award uh, given by National Handicap Welfare Council. Also recipient of Punjab Education and Summit and NCPDP Mindtree Helen Keller Award. So we are so privileged to have you uh, with us, uh, Professor Seni, and uh, your experience and your exposure to such a wider aspect in the field of entrepreneurship and uh, industry and academy and language. I really, I know and I hope that all the participants who are connected with us will gain insight and it, this, uh, this particular session will be uh, useful for all of them. Thank you so much, sir. And I request you to take this session. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Minakshi Shud for such a elaborate introduction. Uh, I am indeed grateful to you for providing me this opportunity to be face to face uh, online, of course, uh, with your participants. I understand there are participants from engineering colleges and also from polytechnics. So welcome you all to this session on uh, entrepreneurship uh, for uh, students of colleges. So what I intend to do is I really uh, would like to do. First of all, I would like to establish the importance of entrepreneurship in today's context. Thereafter, we'll try to define entrepreneurship. We'll talk a bit about uh, entrepreneurial competencies. And uh, towards end of my session, I would like to suggest you a strategy for promoting entrepreneurship in colleges. Uh, as you all are aware in today's context, whether you talk of universities, engineering college, polytechnics, or uh, even ITIs or school. So a lot of emphasis is being given on entrepreneurship development and uh, its need of the hour. So let us uh, try to get into the session. Uh, I have uh, my mobile with me in case I get disconnected. You can just note down my telephone number. And in case we get disconnected, you can just give me a call so that I can join again. It happens many a time on such like uh, online courses. My phone number is 
9814589145. I am repeating once again 9872891457. So this is my telephone number. So in case we get disconnected, do let me know. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about uh, establishing need for entrepreneurship, I think so first of all, we need to really have a look at uh, uh, the employment, unemployment scenario in our country, job scenario in our country. And uh, what we find is, uh, 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 if you look around, uh, there's a bit of uh, economic slowdown. It was a little more during the period of pandemic. Now, of course, pandemic seems to be getting over, but you never know. Uh, the kind of developments which are taking place in China and many other countries, you never know when this uh, pandemic may happen again. So because as a result of this pandemic, there was an economic slowdown uh, world over. And uh, uh, of course, uh, during pandemic, what we have seen is a K-shape, uh, uh, you know, recovery has taken place in certain uh, sectors. Uh, K, by case shape recovery, I mean there are uh, some sectors of economy wherein we have found uh, a lot of development and uh, a lot of growth taking place. On the other hand, there are other sectors where we found, uh, you know, those sectors got affected quite a bit and uh, there were downward trends. So that has happened during the uh, this thing pandemic period. So <clears throat> nowadays we talk a lot about artificial intelligence, blockchain, big data, uh, then uh, industrial automation, use of robots at different workplaces, augmented reality, and uh, now of course uh, uh, driverless cars are being introduced, Inter internet of things is changing the life quite a bit. So because of all these things, what we find is uh, technology is playing a very important role and uh, uh, some of the jobs which earlier used to be done by human beings, those jobs are simply getting eliminated. As per some of the uh, uh, newspaper reports, by the year 2040 or so, 800 popular vocations which are at present done by the human being, they are going to be, you know, uh, those, those jobs are going to be performed by the machines. And you can well imagine if that happens, so then the question arises, what is it the human beings are going to do? Uh, we have also seen some very disturbing, uh, you know, uh, this thing developments in recent past. Uh, there were some jobs advertised by Indian Railways in 2018, I suppose. Uh, 93,000 posts were advertised, category C posts were advertised by Indian Railways. And in response to 93 category C posts, there were 3 crore plus applicants. Government of Tamil Nadu in year 2019, I suppose, they advertised 26,000 posts of clerk and the response was almost uh, 25 to 30 lakh. In Madhya Pradesh, there were 12,000 posts of patwaris and against these 12,000 posts, there were at least 15,000, uh, 15 lakh applicants. In Uttar Pradesh, the government was to recruit some sweepers and uh, some 7,000 sweepers, more than 10,000 people uh, applied over there. And just uh, two days ago, I want to share with you, Nitor many a time conduct some uh, recruitment tests for the agencies which require our services. Uh, the Chandigarh administration was to select 90 teachers, uh, different uh, subject teachers in Chandigarh under uh, Samagra Siksha Abhiyan and against 90 posts, almost uh, 7,000 people applied, almost 4,000 people appeared in written test and you can well imagine the ratio of, uh, you know, selection to rejection in such like cases. Mm -hmm. So this is what is happening. Uh, it's a different thing many a time uh, when you interact with employers, particularly the manufacturing industry, they keep on complaining about uh, uh, this thing, college pass outs, lacking the kind of skill sets which are required by industry in today's context. They keep on finding fault. Somebody says only 10% engineers are employable. Somebody will say 15%. Somebody will say hardly 5% uh, uh, people are employable. So this far, uh, fault finding goes on. Uh, and they keep on talking about this thing. Well, we are prepared to provide job, but competent people are just not available. Okay, 
and at times people even tend to talk about uh, skill shortage in the country so if you look around uh, my personal experience is if you look around so some lower paid jobs of course are available and these jobs would include like uh, 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 delivery boys then car washer security guards plumber sweeper waste segregator maid servants electrician welder hedge cutter lawn mowers etc so such like jobs they are available in plenty but these jobs they hardly offer uh, you know uh, salary somewhere in the range of 8 to 12000 or so so i would say such jobs maybe one can fill one's belly but uh, the problem arises today our leader talk about aspirational key, uh, career for indian youth but these jobs do not really you know meet your aspirations one may get into such like jobs and they are available in plenty but uh, the problem is these jobs do not really uh, uh, you know is this is not something which people really aspire for but for their survival they have to do it so and also i have seen uh, the kind of skill set which people usually pick up so when it comes to picking up skill set you tend to pick up skills which you like <clears throat> but then the marketplace realities may be altogether different and uh, the jobs available they may be uh, totally different so availability of job and the kind of skill sets usually possessed by the people usually do not match and that uh, mismatch again is it's quite frustrating for today's youth so this is what is happening in our <clears throat> economy at present and please do not consider me as pessimist so i have just tried to apprise you of uh, the uh, unemployment problem in the country and because of this unemployment problem so what we find is all educational institution university engineering college polytechnics etc they are laying lot of emphasis on promotion of entrepreneurship and self employment also remember one thing <clears throat> entrepreneurship and self employment they need to be considered as two different uh, you know uh, two different uh, subjects <clears throat> they uh, these two terms should not be made use of interchangeably self employment is something which is of somewhat uh, lower order and uh, self uh, entrepreneurship is something which is of higher order and i personally believe uh, all people all self uh, in, uh, all entrepreneurs are self employed and uh, but then all self employed people need not be ent uh, entrepreneurial in nature and uh, i would say uh, self employment no doubt uh, is required to be promoted just like entrepreneurship is required to be promoted and self employment is something which ultimately in the long run happens to be a nursery for uh, entrepreneurship so from that point of view both are important let's talk a bit about uh, uh, what are different kind of challenges which are being faced by our youth one uh, the first challenge is increasing unemployment in the country national uh, employment uh, unemployment rate which was 7.4% on february 23 2020 it uh, went up to 24.3 during pandemic period on may 24 2020 and uh, last few years uh, you know there have been lot of uh, lot many fluctuations many a time unemployment touches almost 30% sometime it comes down to 6 to 7% or so at present unemployment rate is uh, considered to be hovering around uh, 6% or so but uh, within those who are employed there is lot of underemployment this is the first uh, challenge i mean the kind of jobs which usually people expect that kind of jobs are simply not available in the economy the second challenge faced by indian youth is declining labor force participation rate <clears throat> now Uh, this labor force participation rate it's a ratio of people in the working age to those employed or actively seeking employment suppose there are 100 people available and out of 100 people available only 40 people they are either employed or they are actively looking for jobs so this is the kind of scenario which is uh, prevailing in our country and the country suffers from Uh, low labor force participation rate 
I mean, there are plenty of people available, but not all of them are really uh, making use of their capability or they are not contributing to the economic development of the country simply because work opportunities are not available, jobs are not being generated uh, in the economy and people are frustrated. Here I would like to go a little more into detail of labor force participation rate. Whereas the labor force participation rate in some of the developed countries and uh, uh, other uh, uh, countries where there's not much of unemployment, labor force participation rate may be somewhere around 60 to 65 percent or so. But in India, the latest, as per latest figures, labor force participation rate in India is hardly 40 percent. And if you think of labor force participation rate in terms of gender, there again, there's still more serious problem. And that problem is, whereas the labor force participation rate among men is around 58 to 60% or so, amongst women, it's less than 20%. And that basically goes on proving that uh, the vast, uh, you know, talent available in Indian women that remains only partially utilized. If you look to the data of uh, this thing, higher education in India, uh, you go through that data of higher education in India. There's a report called SHE, Survey of Higher Education in India every year. This report is published. And from that report, you would find uh, when it comes to comparing uh, this thing, number of male and female in higher education. So looking to the population in this country, almost 52% male and 48% female. So in higher education, the ratio of male versus female is almost the same. But when it comes to jobs, so we find hardly one fifth of the women, uh, you know, uh, getting in a variety of jobs or uh, wage and salaried career and vast majority of them not really contributing to the economic development of the country. So it's a huge waste of available talent. And if uh, women uh, like men, men have 60% uh, labor force participation rate, if the same rate could be there for women in the country, it can really give a lot of boost to the uh, economic development of the country. Then third is India is no more an agric uh, agriculture dependent economy. Earlier we used to think India is an agrarian economy and much depends upon agriculture, but the contribution of agriculture in our economy is slowly coming down. You know, when we talk about uh, gross domestic product of India, so gross domestic product basically comes from uh, primary sector, secondary sector, and tertiary sector. Your primary sector is agriculture and allied activity. Secondly, uh, then uh, you have industry and manufacturing sector. And the third one is your service sector. So the contribution of agriculture to Indian economy, when we got independence in 1947, it used to be almost 50%. Uh, services used to contribute almost uh, another 30% uh, or so. And manufacturing sector was contributing almost 20%. But if you talk of today, uh, the uh, share of uh, agriculture and allied activities in gross, uh, uh, this thing, uh, GDP, gross domestic product of the country, it has come down from almost 50% to 14%, and it's further likely to come down. The share of service sector has gone up from 30% to almost uh, uh, touching almost 55, 56% or so and remaining 24-25% is being contributed by the manufacturing and other allied activities. So uh, looking to this data, we can say the India is no more an agriculture, uh, totally agriculture dependent uh, economy. And if there's a setback on agriculture, well, there's a quite a bit of distress, but then uh, the economy is not going to be derailed as such. Then <clears throat> In wage employment, what we find is in wage employment, particularly talking from the viewpoint of our young uh, population, our potential only remains partially utilized. But when you, uh, people get into entrepreneurship, they take entrepreneurship and self-employment as a career, they can really harness their full potential. Hence, if our youth is interested in uh, meeting their aspirations, if they want to get rewarded for the uh, you know initiative taken by them, then they have to necessarily practice 
entrepreneurship they got to take up entrepreneurship as a career option then also what we find is indians many indians they lead multinational companies and world class universities and institutions abroad in developed countries but uh, we do not have many corporates of that size or institution of that kind within the india and uh, corporates and institutions of that standing they are simply missing from uh, uh, they are simply missing in india it's only now we find some of our uh, the, this thing uh, iits uh, then uh, other uh, good institution iims getting reflected in top list of uh, 500 or 200 uh, top universities or institutions of the world otherwise earlier we hardly had any such like uh, you know uh, scenario prevailing in our country so the question now arises if our people if they can lead multinational companies and world class institution abroad why can't they do so within the country itself okay now of course situation is improving and uh, what we find is a uh, lot many people even coming back from abroad and setting up industries here setting up ventures in india start up picking up unicorn organizations are uh, 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 definitely uh, coming up in the country and these unicorn organizations are definitely going to contribute a lot to the economic development of the country then there are plenty of problems in this country you see ours is a country of 1.4 billion population and there's so much of diversity more the diversity large number of you know almost 2000 languages being spoken then there are uh, plenty of problems within the country and more problems basically indicate more entrepreneurial opportunity available within the country because when we talk of entrepreneurship entrepreneurs do nothing but they basically try to solve the problems being faced by the society so entrepreneurial ventures are nothing but they are an attempt to uh, provide solution of some of the problems since there are plenty of problem in the country so there could be uh, there is potential for large number of entrepreneurial opportunity only thing our people have to really exploit those opportunity they need to identify those uh, problem they need to work on solution of those problem and uh, basically venture creation is going to be uh, going to based on the uh, finding out solution of such like problems there is definitely need for enhancing rate of economic growth in the country if uh, we have if we have to become a developed world and if we have to meet the aspirations of our population if we have to uh, uh, you know provide uh, fruitful engagement to our youth then naturally the rate of economic development has to go uh, pick up and uh, this rate of economic development can't really pick up without uh, promotion of entrepreneurship so higher the, the participation of entrepreneurs in the economy more would be the rate of economic development in the country and if we can promote entrepreneurship within the country naturally it's going to arrest the kind of youth unrest which prevails in our country then uh, post uh, covid ways of doing business we are, the covid has taught us so many things and uh, new technologies have been developed new approaches to business have been developed and today they call something you know we are living in in a sort of what they call it as vuca world v u c a vuca basically stands for v stands for uh, volatile u stands for uncertain there's a lot of volatility in the world there's a lot of uncertainty in the world c stands for uh, complexities and uh, uh book uh, a a stands for ambiguity so complexities ambiguities uncertainties and volatility this is what has really happened particularly in post covid uh, times and uh, in this po post covid uh, we got to really uh, you know adjust ourselves as per uh, post covid norms and some ways of doing business or running industry that has also changed okay now let's try to find out uh, what entrepreneurship is and what it is not so remember entrepreneurship is not uh, 
uh, has nothing to do with any religion or any country or uh, it's not country specific or religion or area specific entrepreneurship can flourish anywhere uh, it can develop in india it can develop in any other myanmar sri lanka or for that matter europe anywhere uh, everywhere amongst all communities entrepreneurship can be developed then entrepreneurship is not qualification specific of course certain uh, uh, level of numeracy education that's good for entrepreneur but uh, even uh, lesser educated people many a time we find those people they turn out to be better entrepreneurs so entrepreneurship has nothing to do with your qualification as such and then entrepreneurship is not gender specific also remember uh, uh, don't hold uh, this opinion that uh, entrepreneurship is something which basically pertains to men so both men and women they have equally good uh, opportunity for succeeding in entrepreneurship so it's not gender specific as such then let's have a look at uh, what entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship is basically your state of mind it gets reflected in your thought process and it gets reflected in your action the way you approach certain situation the way you tackle uh, different problems the way you think about a particular given problem so that's something which speaks about your entrepreneurial attitude then entrepreneurship is thinking big so entrepreneurship uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship usually what we find is enterprising people they tend to daydream and they tend to uh, you know imagine something big what they want to do is something great and uh, usually what we see is some non entrepreneurial person when they talk to entrepreneur they interact with entrepreneur they usually find them as uh, you know somebody who is simply daydreaming but this is uh, it this daydreaming only which really makes them plan their activity and execute their activity and uh, uh, they basically because they think big so that's why ultimately they are in a habit of uh, planning for big and achieving something big then entrepreneurship pertains to taking calculated risk entrepreneur are the kind of people who neither uh, operate in very easy kind of situation because easy very easy task they won't like to take because easy task doesn't really provide you an opportunity to stretch at the same time they do not want to get into a gambling kind of activity or extreme risk situation i would say a extreme risk situation is a situation where the chances of failure are almost certain okay so enterprising people usually do not enjoy that kind of situation neither extreme risk situation nor a uh, very easy situation they would like to be somewhere in between and that's what is known as taking moderate or taking calculated risk so entrepreneurs are the uh, are in the habit of taking moderate risk then entrepreneurship is learning from previous experiences entrepreneurial journey you know it's a continuous uh, learning and they keep on learning from their past experiences i would say Uh, every human being makes mistake in fact entrepreneur because they work more so they are likely to make uh, make more mistakes also but the beauty of entrepreneurial uh, practice is once an entrepreneur makes a mistake this person he or she doesn't really matter enterprising people do not usually repeat those mistake and uh, any failure failure experience any bad experience that becomes a sort of permanent uh, a learning uh, uh, permanent uh, uh, this thing learning opportunity for them entrepreneurship is practicing unconventional things so entrepreneur uh, enterprising people they usually uh, do not uh, practice conventional thing they would like to do something unique something different something out of box they would like to make use of their creativity and uh, because of their creative idea they are capable of converting their uh, ideas into business realities and they do uh, try to solve problem by way of following some sort of unconventional uh, uh, this thing uh, uh, unconventional approaches here you got to remember one thing when we talk of unconventional things you see every day we find 
so many new products and services or new products hitting the marketplace. Remember this thing, all innovative products and services hitting the marketplace, they are nothing but they are the outcome of unconventional thinking of the individual sitting somewhere in the world. Okay, so that's the importance of going un unconventional or uh, looking for solution, totally unheard of solutions. So any questions so far? Yes, anybody can respond? Am I making things clear to you? So please do uh, do give me some feedback. Yes, sir. So, any question? Can you please introduce yourself? Can you let me know where from are you speaking? Okay. Any question from any of the participants so far? Uh. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, madam. Please go ahead with your question. Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes, you are audible. You can pose your query. Okay. Sir, uh, I just want to know when we are saying that entrepreneurship is a calculated risk, then how are we supposed to calculate those different types of risk? What should be? What are the different types of inputs which we need to, uh, you know, consider while taking that uh, risk and uh, what percentage we should assign to that risk so that we can, you know, uh, actually prepare a model where we can calculate it in a very realistic manner. Uh, well, I, I would say it's not a, you know, you can't calculate uh, risk as uh, just like a mathematical problem and you cannot assign any particular percentage to this thing. You see, when we talk of entrepreneurship, there's a risk, first of all, there's a risk in this thing, identifying appropriate opportunity. When you mobilize resources, there's a risk involved in mobilizing resources. You may or may not get adequate funding. When you introduce your product for the first time in the marketplace, you know, in marketing, they say getting first order is the most difficult thing for an entrepreneur because nobody knows you in the marketplace. Okay. So there's a risk involved everywhere. You have something in mind. You uh, maybe uh, you have, uh, you know, a product or service in your mind and you may be feeling this product or service is going to be needed by the uh, uh, population or public at large but uh, it may click, it may not click. So there are risks involved in marketing, there are risks involved in raising finance, executing your project. And uh, of course, uh, there's a risk of even not getting uh, the kind of manpower which you need. Risk is involved everywhere, okay? It's basically your own intuition and your networking, which is ultimately going to help you in solving these problems. So percentages cannot be assigned to this, okay? Let me make, uh, let us okay. proceed Thank further you, and make things a little more clear. And thereafter, maybe towards end of the session, maybe we can have some queries, eh? more queries. But in between, of course, you are most welcome. Anyone else? Or should we proceed further? Okay, let's proceed further. So as I told you, entrepreneurship and self-employment, they need to be considered as two different, uh, you know, aspects. So when you visit any marketplace, what we find in a marketplace, say, uh, I'll cite an example from Chandigarh or maybe Knat Place in Delhi. So when you go to a busy marketplace, what you find over there, somebody is selling balloon on a bicycle, somebody is selling, uh, you know, uh, selling popcorn sitting under the staircases, somebody is having a departmental store, running a good departmental store. So they, uh, somebody is doing certain activities on part-time basis, somebody may be doing it on, on full-time basis, okay? So we find a variety of economic activities taking place over there. And all these places, uh, whatever is happening in a marketplace, could be manufacturing, trading, franchisee, okay? Any kind of servicing, okay? All these things, they are nothing but economic activity. But some of these economic activities are being done on full-time basis. Some of the activities may be done on part-time basis and uh, some of the activities are basically a source of livelihood uh, for the uh, person. 
and in certain enterprises you might find certain degree of uh, diversity diversification branching out of that given activity and then carrying on the activity like that okay let me give some example of self, self employment and uh, entrepreneurship activity there is sector 17 which is popularly known as uh, uh, city center in chandigarh so if you go over there so you may find a few cobblers repairing shoe or shining shoe sitting in a row and uh, they have a designated place okay uh, maybe hardly 3 ft by 3 ft space they have they sit over there and organize their activity over there and this person you might find there are some people who have been uh, you know carrying on this business for decades together so these are perfect example of self employment so here uh, in hindi what they call it as marta kya na karta ki pet palne ke liye kuch to karna hi hai okay that kind of activity the, the kind of activity you are involved in that's your source of livelihood okay but on the other hand there are some activity where you find ki somebody setting up a shop in sector 17 expanding that activity branching out of that activity taking up other allied activities having Uh, backward and uh, forward linkages of that activity like there used to be one store called uh, you know empire store in sector 17 in chandigarh and after few years what happened from empire store they started empire leasing they started empire packaging they started empire uh, industries and uh, from simple uh, shop they converted it into departmental store okay so you find certain amount of uh, excellence expansion uh, scaling up of activity and branching out of those activities so such like activities they are enterprising activity so what we find is in uh, in any country you'll find very few people are of enterprising nature by and large you'll have large number of people who are self employed in any market place you go over you will find this thing a large number of people they are self employed a few of them they may be uh, you know enterprising in nature and they may branch out of this thing so that's why we say the all entrepreneurs they are self employed but all self employed people need not be entrepreneurial in nature because most of them they are simply they are somehow trying to manage their activity and uh, they are uh, carrying on the business and that's the source of livelihood for these people okay now there are a few definition uh, we'll quickly cover these uh, uh, in fact when you go through literature on entrepreneurship you will find large number of definition it was way back in 1989 to 1993 when i was doing my phd on entrepreneurship so i read a uh, lot many books lot of literature on entrepreneurship and uh, in in fact in one of the uh, journal what i found was it goes on mentioning about uh, defining entrepreneurship it says uh, the definition there is no consensus on defining entrepreneur and the number of definitions of entrepreneurs are probably more than the number of people who really write about entrepreneurship so that's the kind of uh, you know scenario which prevails so different people they tend to explain the concept of entrepreneurship differently a psychologist would explain the personality of uh, entrepreneur differently economist would have a look at entrepreneurship in a different man, uh, manner sociologist will look at entrepreneurship in a little different manner a few definitions we are going to discuss here so first definition is given by webster's dictionary which says the entrepreneur who is an entrepreneur an organizer of an economic venture especially one who organizes owns manages and assume the risk of business good or bad whatever it is ultimately it all belongs to the entrepreneur almost similar definition is given by uh, funk and wagner who says uh, funk and wagner standard dictionary and as per this dictionary uh, who is an entrepreneur one who undertakes to start and conduct an enterprise enterprise is nothing but taking up an economic activity so the one who undertakes to start and conduct an enterprise or business assuming full control and risk full control and risk again means you are getting into a venture which involves a lot of risk it may succeed or it may fail if you succeed it's because of you if you 
fail again because of you you don't have to bla uh, blame anyone else so that's what uh, really means assuming full control and risk no blame game no blaming anybody mill considers mill has given uh, you know explained some of the functions of entrepreneur and what he says is the mill considers a direction giving direction controlling that business superintendence and risk bearing as the entrepreneurial function the entrepreneur discharges these functions giving direction to the business enterprise or economic enterprise controlling it owning it superintendence day to day superintendence of it and ultimately uh, uh, enjoying the fruits of that yet another uh, definition little more comprehensive uh, is given by joseph sumpeter a renowned uh, economist and what joseph sumpeter says about entrepreneurship is the entrepreneurship is a creative activity the entrepreneur being an innovator who introduces something new into the economy and when we talk about introducing something new it could be a new method of production not yet tested by experience in the branch of manufacture concern it may be you so many people are manufacturing the same product but here comes a person who manufactures this product all together by following a different method so it could be a unique method of manufacturing it could be a product with which the consumers are not familiar maybe as an entrepreneur you introduce a product in the marketplace which was not earlier existing so a unique product earlier which was not existing at all so introducing a new product or it could be a new source of raw material your entrepreneurship your creativity your innovator uh, innovative uh, ness may get reflected even in making use of the raw material suppose uh, a person is uh, in the business of making furniture so usually furniture is made of either wood or uh, maybe aluminium or maybe steel or maybe fiberglass or something like that but there may be yet another entrepreneur uh, coming and uh, you find that entrepreneur making use of all together a different kind of material okay so uh, when we talk about innovativeness or uh, this thing uh, creativity so enterprising people may make use of different kind of raw material or they may even uh, you know exploit markets which were not at all earlier touched by anybody so uh, exploiting the unexploited market so uh, joseph sumpeter if you look to this particular definition he lays emphasis on innovation and creativity innovative and creative ideas of an entrepreneur and as per joseph sumpeter there can't be entrepreneurship without introducing any kind of innovativeness and without practicing creativity so more the creative ideas with entrepreneur better the chances of succeeding in it the last definition which i want to discuss with you it's given by one mark kesson and mark kesson has again you know uh, uh, given a lot of emphasis on uh, what actually the entrepreneur does as per him an entrepreneur is someone who specializes in taking judgmental decisions about the coordination of scarce resources so uh, uh, mark kesson claims it as a functional uh, definition of entrepreneur of course uh, it just uh, uh, two line definition very small but uh, if you lay your hands on uh, literature on entrepreneurship mark kesson has written one complete book the title of the book is the entrepreneur and i read that entire book and uh, the definition given by him is indeed uh, you know uh, definition is very concise but it has lot of deep meaning behind as per mark kesson when we talk of entrepreneur we talk of an individual that's what it really means an entrepreneur is someone someone means an individual suppose in a given class there are 50 students attending that class so we cannot term all 50 students as entrepreneur but within those 50 student there may be some who are more enterprising than others okay so it's always relative okay that's why we say entrepreneurship is something which pertains to the individual personality entrepreneurship is someone who specializes in taking judgmental decision about the coordination of scarce resources this means 
uh, the uh, you know all of us do take decision uh, in our day to day life but we don't become in uh, we don't become expert in taking decision okay but with regard to the kind of enterprise the entrepreneur is in this person becomes expert in taking that kind of decision and this decision could be pertaining to the kind of uh, variety of resources which go in that enterprise when we say resources maybe some of you have studied economics and those of you who know uh, who have studied a bit of economics they would know there's something known as the factors of production and you know most of the entrepreneur they are involved in production factors of production in economic terms include land labor capital and the entrepreneur these are four uh, as well established factors of production and uh, entrepreneur basically tries to coordinate these four factors of production also you got to remember when we talk about different factors of production all these factors of production they are available only in limited quantity nothing is available in abundance nothing is available in unlimited quantity and because these are scarce resources so entrepreneur has to really put these scarce resources to the best possible uh, you know uh, has to utilize them in a best possible manner okay has to put them in uh, uh, put to the best use usually you know in government department what happens suppose we get a project when the project is assigned so a project is secured thereafter you assign this project to a team you allocate different resources and then the activity goes on but that's possible in government but when it comes to an entrepreneurial activity what usually happens is so given the resources entrepreneur would uh, put those resources to use then would like to get feedback and uh, in light of the feedback the person would then think of shifting the resources from an area of lower productivity to an area of higher productivity and uh, the entrepreneur would continue doing so unless the entrepreneur really reaches at the optimum utilization of the resources so it's basically optimization of the scarce resources coordination of scarce resources and optimization of those resources so this is what mark kaysen really says about this thing and as per mark kaysen if you study that book written by mark kaysen mark kaysen says uh, entrepreneurship is something which can flourish in any social endeavor okay uh, one could be enterprising in nature in teaching one could be enterprising in nature in politics one could be enterprising in nature in agriculture one could be enterprising in nature in business or industry or trading or uh, franchise okay one could be enterprising even in politics one could be enterprising even as a housewife okay so entrepreneurship is something which has to do something to do with your attitude your uh, way of doing the things so uh, it's a much broader definition and uh, where in entrepreneur basically tries to coordinate the scarce resources in fact uh, mark kaysen has given typology of entrepreneurship i just want to cite a few example from that like he has given given much of the you know examples from the developed world but i try to indigenize those uh, examples and as per mark kaysen like uh, uh, when we talk of uh, this thing you see there are some bad element in our society there are people who get involved in uh, smuggling underground activity crimes and such like activities you see such like people uh, who have that crimin uh, criminal mentality they plan uh, things and they ultimately execute those things but then the thing is if they plan their activity very meticulously and most of the time they succeed in doing so so as per mark uh, kaysen's definition such like uh, people are also enterprising in nature but they are put under the category of criminal entrepreneurs then there are people like uh, if you look to the uh, india's uh, this thing freedom struggle people like chandrashekar azad netaji subhash chandra bose then uh, uh, sardar bhagat singh uh, uh, 
then Raj Guru and uh, so many other people who revolutionized the entire uh, Indian freedom struggle at that given point of time. They were also enterprising in nature, but they are put under the category of revolutionary enterprises. Uh, entrepreneur. So there are revolutionary entrepreneurs, there are uh, criminal entrepreneurs, there are agro entrepreneurs, there are education entrepreneurs, there are politician entrepreneurs. Politician entrepreneurs, I would like to cite an example here. Think of this thing, uh, late Bansilal of Haryana, who once upon a time used to be a very ordinary kind of advocate in a court, and he uh, was hardly getting uh, an adequate number of clients. Somehow he got into politics and became MLA. To his good luck, the then uh, chief minister during 1960, the then chief minister died, and uh, the late Sri Bansilalji became the caretaker chief minister. So from caretaker chief minister, he became a regular chief minister. From regular chief minister, he was chief minister for more than one term. Then he moved to the center and became union railway minister. And uh, he was aiming high. Then, of course, uh, there was a bad time for Congress in between. He was thrown out of the party. Then he created his own party and again came to power in Haryana. Again, managed a sort of comeback. So such like people who excel in politics, and exhibit their enterprising personality over there, they are also considered to be entrepreneur, but they are put under the category of politician entrepreneurs. So just like there are agro entrepreneurs, politician entrepreneurs, criminal entrepreneurs, there are business entrepreneurs, there are industrial entrepreneurs, there are franchisee entrepreneurs, there are entrepreneurs, there are uh, people in tourism, people in different sectors. So uh, I suppose, uh, I have uh, devoted quite a bit of time on defining entrepreneur and by now you should be quite clear about who an entrepreneur is. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's time, we uh, uh, tend to, uh, you know, talk about intrapreneurship as well. In fact, uh, just day before yesterday, I read one very detailed article uh, in Times of India and it was basically about uh, what is it uh, the student should be learning today, particularly from entrepreneurship point of view? And they say the students in days to come, they have to be either behave like an entrepreneur or they got to behave like an intrapreneur. Entrepreneur and intrapreneur, somewhat related terms. And uh, I'll, I, I thought of, you know, devoting little time on uh, explaining the concept of intrapreneur so that you can share this knowledge with your student and you can uh, 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 motivate them to either become entrepreneur or uh, intrapreneur. Okay. What exactly is intrapreneur? Intrapreneuring is defined as the process in which the innovative products or uh, processes, they are developed by creating an entrepreneurial culture within an existing organization. And Intrapreneur takes responsibility for creating innovations of any kind, but within the organization, intrapreneur are basically people who work for others. They are basically paid employees. They are engaged by somebody, but because of their very nature of being intrapreneur, they are in the habit of creating, doing something big, creating something new, converting ideas into business realities, introducing new products and services. Okay. The intrapreneur may be a creator or inventor, but he is always a dreamer who does. Dreamer means he dreams something and he converts, he or she converts that dream into a business reality. So, Intrapreneur is something who's a, a, a dreamer who does and figures out how to turn an idea into a profitable business reality. So in simple words, I would so, uh, say intrapreneur are nothing but they are highly enterprising, entrepreneur like people, but rather than working for their own self, they work for others. They are paid employees, but highly creative, highly innovative, and they are capable of converting their dreams into action. Okay. Then the question arises, what are uh, the commonalities and what are the difference between entrepreneur and intrapreneur? Intrapreneurship versus entrepreneurs. So when we look at entrepreneur and intrapreneur, 
both entrepreneur and entrepreneur, they both focus on innovation. Both focus on value added products and services. And both require investment in activity that are more riskier than normal. In fact, uh, normal activities, they simply do not enjoy entrepreneur and uh, entrepreneur. And I would request, I would suggest we should ultimately sell this idea to our students and we must convey to them they should either become entrepreneur or they should become intrapreneur so that they can really reach, uh, harness their full potential and do something great. So these three things are common so far as intrapreneur and entrepreneurship is concerned. We both focus on innovation, both uh, do something, uh, 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 both focus on value-added products and services and they both require investment in different type of activities. Okay. But what is it? Something which makes them different? Intrapreneur are basically paid employees. And intrapreneur is a person who basically makes use of the money organized or provided by the entrepreneur. In other words, we can say, when we talk about entrepreneur, entrepreneur either makes use of his own money or he makes use of borrowed money. Okay. But when we talk of intrapreneur, intrapreneur basically makes use of the money arranged by the entrepreneur and that's how with by utilizing those resources intrapreneur comes out with innovations and productivity so if you have to develop this concept of intrapreneur amongst your student here are 10 commandments given these 10 commandments include if somebody wants to behave like an intrapreneur he should be willing to when you go to work come to work each day willing to be fired because intrapreneur are innovative people so they don't tend to compromise on certain things so they are willing to you know uh, this thing fight with others come to work each day willing to be fired there would be some hindi mein jisko bolte anman the at workplace there may be some sort of uh, uh, adjustment problem okay that's basically because of the very personality, intrapreneur-like personality. This person is somewhat extraordinary. Hence, he is not going to mix up so well and would concentrate on his or her own job. Then, circumvent any order aimed at stopping your dreams. Intrapreneurial people, they are the kind of people who would, uh, you know, go beyond the given rules and regulations. Usually you'll find in every organization, be it government organization or private organization, there are rules and regulations established, but enterprising people, they tend to break those rules and go beyond that because for them, doing something innovative is important and something innovative, something unconventional, something new cannot be done unless you have some unique approach. And that unique approach may not be possible within the given rules and regulation. Hence, they tend to circumvent the orders which are prevailing in the organizations. And they are prepared to face the consequences. Then do any job need to make your product or work regardless of your job description. So because they are basically concentrating on achieving something, coming out with something new, so they will do any kind of job which ultimately helps them in uh, uh, this thing, accomplishing ultimately the given task. So do any job needed to make your product work regardless of your job description. So they are the kind of people who don't refer to the, who don't go through their job, their job des uh, description time and again. They would basically aim at doing, yes, I have to do this thing. And uh, if I have to do the given task, so I am going to go much beyond the uh, given rules and regulation if need be. So rules and regulation, they can be compromised. Then they are in the habit of finding people who can really help them. So find people to help you. Follow your intuition and uh, the people you choose and work only with the best. Enterprising people are such, they would not like to uh, work with the average or below average kind of people. They would only like to work with the best people and they would definitely like to honor their sponsor and sponsors are nothing but the uh, the management or the entrepreneur the one who really provides them money so 
honoring sponsorship is yet another uh, personality trait of entrepreneur then they also believe in this thing you never bet on a race unless you are running in it in hindi they call it as ki jis gaon ko jana hi nahi wahan ka rasta kya puchna okay so never bet in a race unless you are running in it if you have some stake in it then okay get involved otherwise forget about it uh, this thing apne kaam se kaam rakhiyega okay never bet on in a race unless you are running in it and remember it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for seeking permission so usually in most of the work situation so if the task is given one tend to be working within rules and regulation and uh, uh, one doesn't really want to go beyond that but enterprising people they are in the habit intrapreneur intrapreneur so they are the kind of people if some rules regulation are coming in their way they will break the uh, rules regulation and they will ultimately accomplish the task having accomplished the task they would then try to regularize these things maybe having achieved something then you go to your superior or your boss or the uh, proprietor and you tell him this is what i was to achieve i have ultimately achieved it and but uh, with a view to achieve it i had to compromise with certain rules regulations so please forgive me for going beyond the rules but ultimately i have achieved what i was to achieve so that's why they believe in this thing they, if you seek for permission nobody is going to give you permission because that doesn't fit in within the existing rules and regulations but having done something good if you try to regularize if you want to get uh, this thing forgiveness so in most situation one would be in a position to get uh, this thing forgiveness for that then be true to your goal uh, but be realistic about the ways to achieve them so it's always good to be true to your goal and one should have realistic idea and finally honoring your sponsors or taking care of your sponsors requirement is something which is needed so this is th uh, something you know some tenets of uh, uh, promoting intrapreneurship within your student so i think so by now we have established the need for uh, being an entrepreneur or intrapreneur and if some of your student they exhibit entrepreneur like quality or intrapreneur like quality they are definitely going to do something extraordinary and they are going to achieve uh, greater results and the country definitely needs large number of intrapreneur and entrepreneurs now i am going to discuss with you uh uh i made use of the term thinking big so most of the enterprising people they tend to think big but uh, when you deliver a lecture in your classroom i think so you should try to find out the are there really some big thinker in your class and if there are some big thinker if there are some dead dreamer so you need to identify them you need to nurture them you need to monitor them and they are uh, the right kind of material for being converted into entrepreneurs so now here is a sort of quiz or a sort of key which i am going to provide you you can make use of it and uh, i have no hesitation even in sharing the ppt with you i will uh, leave copy of this uh, ppt with the course coordinator professor minakshi sood and maybe she'll make it available to all of you so try to understand if you have to find out whether or not there are some big thinker and petty thinker in your class you can make use of these uh, two slides so uh, uh, it's very simple you see uh, uh, branding somebody as petty thinker or big thinker i think we should not indulge in that kind of thing we should provide we should become a facilitator and let the individual himself or herself find out whether one belongs to a petty thinker category or a big thinker category okay so here are some situations given and then uh, in those situations how is it a petty thinker behave how is it a big thinker behave i think that need to be observed or that need to be told to the performer and then let the performer himself or herself find out whether that person is a petty thinker or a big thinker and if one happens to be a petty thinker ultimately that person is not a good material for being successful as entrepreneur or entrepreneur but if that person is a big thinker so given proper guidance given proper nurturing 
ओके मेंटरिंग एक्सेट्रा दिस पर्सन कैन क्लियरली प्रूव टू बी ए गुड एंटरप्रेन्योर और इंटरप्रेन्योर सो व्हेन इट कम्स टू कन्वर्सेशन यू विल फाइंड ग्रुप ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स कन्वर्सिंग ओके और इवन विद इन द फैकल्टी ग्रुप्स व्हेन पीपल यूजुअली कन्वर्स डू यूजुअली पीपल टॉक अबाउट द नेगेटिव क्वालिटी और पीपल डू दे यूजुअली टॉक अबाउट द पॉजिटिव क्वालिटी एंड रिमेंबर दिस थिंग यू थिंक ऑफ एनी इंडिविजुअल also ever bad that person may be there is some good in every individual so if it is that then a big thinker would talk about the positive qualities and a petty thinker would only talk about the negative quality of the people when it comes to work usually petty thinker tend to avoid work and big thinker they always look for ways and means of doing the work so this is something which can easily be observed within a group of students the weather when you give them work do they try to avoid or do they uh, try to find out ways and means of doing it okay then third is progress when it comes to progress discussing about project uh, progress so petty thinker would believe in retrenchment reducing manpower etc and a big thinker would always uh, uh, think in terms of expanding activity mobilizing resources and uh, Uh, he basically because that person basically believes in expansion okay uh when it comes to future a petty thinker would always consider future as very very limited unclear limited but when it comes to a uh, big thinker so this big thinker would always uh, consider future as promising future as bright now here let me cite an example of uh, from my own experiences it was way back in 1990 i was doing my phd work and uh, i was uh, i interviewed in fact almost 600 uh, entrepreneur which included some highly successful some not so successful and some uh, even failure experiences or not doing so well so there was a question in my questionnaire and the question was i used to ask all these people Hey, think of your enterprise, and do let me know how do you see the future of your enterprise five years hence. Where would you be after five years? Okay. And when I used to pose these questions, different type of answers were received. Some people said, uh, "Well, future is not that promising. Future is dark. I don't know." i don't know what is uh, going to happen tomorrow or next year or after two year there were other who were saying say five years hence maybe i'll convert my uh, sole proprietorship into partnership i'll convert my partnership into a private limited company a private limited company may say i am going to convert it into a public limited company somebody came with the answer like five years hence my sales will double five years hence my all loans would be paid off five years hence uh, maybe i'll come out with a public issue okay so th that kind of responses what i found was ultimately people who did not succeed in their businesses in their enterprises so they were uh, their thought process was dominated by negative thinking and uh, i remember one particular uh, 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 interacting with a particular entrepreneur in faridabad when i posed him this question so it was month of january very cold over there and uh, the person over there i posed him this question he yeah, how do you see the future of your enterprise 5 years hence so uh, this person removed his cap and told me he hey, do you see my head there are no hair when i got into this enterprise i used to have full hair very bushy kind of hair hair but then because of the kind of problems i am faced with so i have become a bald uh, person okay so uh, he further told me he given an opportunity i would like to get out, out of my enterprise and go back to my wage career but my problem is i just can't go back to my wage career so i am stuck in it and you are asking me a very uncomfortable kind of question uh i don't know what might happen to my enterprise next year and you are asking me to tell me about 5 years hence so i am unable to tell you this thing 
So this is the kind of responses. And when I analyze the responses, ultimately I found a uh, people who are not so successful or who are facing problem, they are, uh, you know, uh, this thing, their thinking was dominated by negative thought process and those who are progressing and having, uh, you know, uh, this thing progressing in their enterprises, they uh, uh, talked about, uh, they found the future as promising and something rewarding. And uh, they always uh, shared this thing, the future is going to be bright and uh, good things are going to happen in days to come. When it comes to competition, there are many people who basically tend to talk, uh, tend to compete with average or below average, but there are others who would only like to compete with the best. So big thinkers would always think of competing with the best. So uh, uh, think of, say, uh, here I would like to cite example of Tata's way back in 1991-92 when India switched over to liberalization, privatization and globalization. Tata's took stock of their situation and the then uh, person at helm of the affairs, he announced, he now Tata's are going to be in businesses where uh, they are either number one or number two, at the maximum number three. And there's no point competing. There's no point being in, uh, you know, uh, in the bottom. And any business where we are not number one, two, or three, we will simply exit out of those businesses. So it basically reflects the, you know, competition or being the best. Okay. So that kind of thing. Then uh, when it comes to budgeting, a petty thinker usually tend to cut down on necessary costs, whereas a big thinker tend to increase the sources of in income by way of taking some other activities. Then uh, goal, when it comes to setting goal, usually petty thinker would set a low goal and achieve a low goal, whereas the big thinker would set a high goal and work accordingly. As regards vision, so a Petty thinker is going to see only a limited uh, ways and means of doing the things or will have a very limited vision, whereas a big thinker is always preoccupied with long term and thinking of the long term solution coming out with something new. As regards giving companionship, a petty thinker is usually surrounded with petty thinkers only because people used to tend to, you know, like people. Uh, of their own, uh, 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 they would like to have friendship with uh, the kind of people they themselves are, okay. Whereas the big thinker, so any kind of surrounding, when it comes to getting into a gathering, they would usually be found surrounded with persons of large and progressive ideas. Like uh, if it is a marriage party or any other social gathering, there would always be some influential people and you will find a big thinker getting tagged with those people of uh, influence or people who really matter, people who hold certain position. And in this process, they learn something, they'll develop some contact with them. Then, you know, uh, when it comes to taking stock of the mistake, there are some people who tend to magnify even uh, mistakes of minor consequences. In Hindi, they call it as Rai ka pahad banana. Rai ka pahad banana means important but then you make it something great okay so uh, a petty thinker would magnify the even minor errors and make them look great whereas a big thinker would uh, always ignore errors of minor consequences but if there's something really serious so this person would also get serious and take it seriously as regards security, which is the last key, so security, usually petty thinkers are preoccupied with security problems and uh, when it comes to expansion of activity, rather than uh, concentrating on the, uh, that job, they'll be concerned about the who's going to take care of the uh, this thing, security, theft might take place or something might bad may happen, who will get it repaired later on, that kind of thing, whereas the big thinker, they always regard security as a natural companion of success. Think of our great leader, think of Modi ji, or think of industrialists like Dhirubhai Ambani, Adani, etc., or other uh, big guns. So if they start getting worried about the security, then they won't simply be able to perform the task, carry on with the activity. 
but uh, they ultimately develop the habit of uh, you know this thing regarding security as a natural companion of success ki upar agar jayenge agar aapne badhna hai jeevan mein to security can always be taken care of you can have your own private security you can get security from the government you can have your own guards okay so security need to be considered as part and parcel uh, part and parcel of enterprising life so ladies and gentlemen this is a simple key i suppose uh, all of you you can practice this thing in a given classroom situation you can uh, uh, you know sell this idea to students student can themselves find out whether they belong to petty thinking category or big thinking category if you have some student and i'm sure some student would always be there with the uh, big thinking so identify them nurture them and throw some ideas to them throw some challenge and they are the kind of people who would like to accept the challenges okay now uh, i would like to discuss with you how to go about promoting entrepreneurship in your colleges you represent different universities and colleges and uh, having got convinced about importance of entrepreneurship you should then try to institutionalize this activity of entrepreneurship and here the very first step i would uh, which goes a long way in promoting entrepreneurship amongst your student is he mention first of all mention entrepreneurship promotion amongst your student as one of the program specific outcome so most of the institution i suppose uh, either you would have gone for nba or nec accreditation if you have not then in the days to come you would definitely go for that uh, nba accreditation and nec accreditation and when you go for nba accreditation naturally you got to uh, finalize your program specific objective so when you write objective maybe 6 to 8 in number of a particular program so within those program specific objective diverting some of the enterprising people or people with latent entrepreneurial talent diverting them towards self uh, this entrepreneurship and intrapreneurship so mention it as one of your program specific objective okay so if you mention it as a program specific objective naturally it will get reflected in your curriculum and you will uh, definitely because ultimately it's going to be measured or whether or not some students have gone for entrepreneurship or uh, whether or not some students have become intrapreneur so incorporating it as one of the program specific objective is of extreme importance and that's going to be the beginning if you have done that then the second step could be to establish entrepreneurship cell or technology business incubator some uh, institutions would already have this facility those who do not have at least uh, a entrepreneurship cell can be established over there formally or informally so you must have some arrangement wherein uh, you know people can come to you they can seek guidance they can be mentored they can be put uh, you know they can be made to interact with some seasoned entrepreneur some guidance can be given and some business ideas can be discussed so uh, you must have some arrangement for that and for that either establish a cell or have technology business incubator nowadays we find all almost all state governments they are giving lot of emphasis on uh, uh, incubators in haryana i know there is a state level decision taken to promote uh, business incubators in uh, different colleges and cluster of colleges they would join they will have that facility and uh, students are uh, you know encouraged to go for their own startups and they these startup could be very small ultimately from small it will become big so establish entrepreneurship cell or technology business incubator give identity to this facility by having a separate office so uh, uh, it may be just one room space okay but uh, put up a separate board and let uh, people know there's something known as entrepreneurship cell or business incubator cell or business promotion cell so give identity to this facility by having a separate office and appoint a coordinator to head the cell or technology business incubator 
so this cell need to be created and somebody you see uh, when it comes to appointing a coordinator so here seniority should not really matter you should uh, have a person as in charge or faculty in charge of this cell somebody who has good equation with the management and with the principal or director of the institution somebody who is very clear in communication somebody who is willing to extend help to the students and has uh, you know believe in extending services somebody who is committed to this cause so seniority doesn't really matter much so the advantage of having some senior person is like this person can frequently approach the board or the uh, principal or director of the college and uh, the senior tend to give little more weightage to that person so that advantage of course is there but at times uh, uh, a senior may not necessarily suit uh, the kind of uh, you know work which is involved as a coordinator of the cell so keep this thing in mind then once uh, the coordinator has been appointed then uh, get some required budget sanction for that and if you go through the nba guidelines there again there's a lot of emphasis on promotion of uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship cell if you have a cell allocate some resources bare minimum resources this uh, cell can always uh, get some uh, funding from uh, maybe public sector bank or even from private companies or uh, one can get some sponsored project etc so get some bare minimum required funds so that uh, you can get uh, go ahead with the activity then work on entrepreneur identification process the most important thing in uh, this thing you know uh, promotion of entrepreneurship is you see entrepreneurship is not something which is everybody's cup of tea only a few person from amongst your class would be enterprising in nature and basically wisdom lies in identifying those entrepreneurs so if you try to make entire class as enterprising the chances are you are going to fail because vast majority of the people are either uh, you know uh, on completion of that degree or diploma so they are aiming at getting into some uh, salaried career but there would always be some people maybe because of their background because of their uh, unique nature or because of their creative idea they would like to uh, set up their own enterprise and they would like to be master of their own so try to identify that small group of people i would say if you are running five courses in your college say each course having intake of 60 you have uh, maybe uh, 300 student out of these 300 student there would easily be some 10 to 20 students who are enterprising in nature who are from maybe somewhat business background or otherwise possessing innovative ideas identify them and for identification purposes just like i have given you that uh, you know this thing thinking big or thinking small there are different tools batteries of tests available but uh, psychological tests need to be applied very carefully okay it's only a seasoned person who can really make use of them and uh, there are uh, different tests available and they can help you in identifying enterprising personality identify those people then nurture them properly okay give them required help required resources become a facilitator for them that would go a long way in promoting entrepreneurship then create a pool of mentors and make them interact with enterprising students just like i have told you the out of 300 identify 10 to 20 people and these 10 to 20 people they need to be brought in interaction with mentors or resource resourceful people around or captains of industry so maybe one can create a pool of mentors when we create a pool of mentors look to the requirement of a potential entrepreneur a potential entrepreneur may need services of a legal expert a patent filer a finance expert a banker or a ca or uh, maybe somebody expert in marketing somebody expert in strategy somebody expert in formulating a business plan okay somebody well versed with business laws somebody who is expert in uh, gst etc so because 
uh, entrepreneur has to perform variety of activity and uh, when it comes to setting up enterprise lot many things have to be taken care of so uh, it is always good to uh, have uh, you know pool of uh, expert pool of mentors and keep on inviting those people from time to time make them interact with this smaller group identified group so uh, otherwise if you try to do it for all student then your efforts are going to be spread so thinly ultimately it's not going to give you any results so identification of uh, potential enterprising people with latent entrepreneurial talent then working with them will definitely give you some positive result then have a selection jury if you have a technology business incubator so who should benefit from that uh, business incubator facility for that maybe you can have a jury of uh, uh, three to four persons and these three to four persons they should select the beneficiary they should evolve the norms uh, and then uh, uh, the institute need to prepare constitution of technology business incubator or entrepreneurship cell and having uh, prepared the constitution that constitution would definitely include the what all this facility what all this technology business incubator would be doing so activity list has to be prepared so prepare a calendar of activity what all the facility is going to do and then implement your plan so the calendar which has been prepared it need to be implemented and once it is implemented then you must have provision for uh, uh, seeking feedback provision for uh, monitoring the activity and uh, uh, a regular review or monitoring is something which need to be practiced on a regular basis so these are some of the points which can really help you a, a lot in uh, taking the idea forward now just Madam uh, Minakshi Sood, can we take five minutes more? Hello? Okay, I'll just finish it in next five minutes. Uh, yes, sir. Sure, sir. I think we can take another five minutes. Okay, five minutes, we'll conclude it. So now I would like to throw, uh, I would like to explain a bit about, uh, you know, when we, uh, it's good to talk about entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship, but most of the enterprising students, they are going to bother the faculty. They will come to them and ask for, hey, what is it I should get started with? Hey, what sort of venture should I take up? So product selection or project selection is the most crucial and most difficult decision in the life of an entrepreneur. And there's no specific formula for this thing. It's not like uh, when you get sick, you go to a doctor, doctor writes a prescription for you and you go to a chemist, take that medicine and you get well soon. Okay. Uh, maybe doctor can do that, but it's not uh, like uh, you want to set up an entrepreneur, you go to a, a consultant or your teacher and teacher writes a prescription for you and then uh, ultimately you take up that activity. So that should not be done in case of uh, product selection or project selection. So this being a very crucial decision, it has to be taken by the entrepreneur. And uh, I would say in Hindi, mein jo bolte hai na ki suno sab ki aur karo apne man ki. so listen to everybody, uh, uh, be fully informed, look around, keep your ears and eyes wide open and ultimately get into something which really convinces you. So, uh, this crucial decision should be taken by potential entrepreneurs after considering all market peculiarities and realities. Some of the peculiarities and realities of the Indian marketplace I am going to discuss with you in next three to four minutes. Remember, as a potential entrepreneur, you got to sell this idea to your potential entrepreneurs. Remember, India is the largest market in the world next only to China. And here in this market, both costliest and the cheapest thing get sold even spurious uh, products, duplicate products, they can also be sold. Only thing you got to know your client. Whom are you going to serve? Whom are you going to satisfy? Whom are you going to cater to? That's important. Second thing which you got to remember is the kind of throwaway culture which exists in many other developed country, that kind of culture doesn't exist in India. Maybe to some extent now throwaway culture has slowly started in India also. Otherwise, uh, you know, India is known to be a circular kind of uh, circular economy. We Indian, uh, Indians are known to be operating in a circular economy where 
uh, whatever we buy, we want to get maximum out of it because we are in the habit of not throwing the things. So hence, there's a lot of scope for uh, repair, maintenance, servicing, etc. Okay. So uh, now when we have, uh, you know, uh, this thing, uh, latest, most fuel efficient vehicle, we still find some old models available on the road. Okay. Uh, uh, we find, uh, I mean, people don't want to dispose of their old things so easily. They would like to get maximum out of it. And if that has to happen naturally, it requires some servicing support. Also, tell to your potential student, potential enterprising student, the best quality may not necessarily get sold at the marketplace. One may be capable of uh, producing the best, but uh, in most cases, producing the best quality is going to cost you and then you got to look to the size of the pocket of the uh, potential customer whether or not they can afford here usually i give this example of this thing you see we all are fully aware of godrej products godrej manufacture excellent uh, wardrobe almira and furniture etc but this evening when you go back home just try to find out how many godrej products you have okay so you have to keep in mind the size of the pocket of the potential customer and the best quality you may be capable of producing the best quality but it may not necessarily get sold in the marketplace so manufacture something which is needed in the marketplace also remember there is no product or service the quality of which cannot be further improved upon let's not get boggled uh, uh, bogged down with this thing we are students are only going to manufacture something innovative something uh, uh, which has never been introduced in the marketplace. I would suggest uh, as an engineer or as a technocrat, get uh, you should pick up any of the existing product and try to improve upon the quality of that product or try to make it a little more cost effective. And if you can do that, you can be in a good business. And we in this country, we have uh, uh, not been in a position to manufacture a quality stapler, quality stapling pin, quality all pin, quality uh, pencil sharpener or pencils. There's definitely scope for improving quality of all this. Or when you go to travel to a particular place, you travel from uh, Chandigarh to Delhi on roadside, you find so many dhabas and some of these dhabas are not maintained so cleanly. Né? The level of hygiene is so poor. So there's definitely scope for improving the functioning of those uh, restaurant dhabas, etc. And the one who will do it, that person will emerge as a better entrepreneur. So remember, we need not go for totally innovative products and services. Some of the existing products and services, they provide a lot of potential for improving their quality and making it a good business. Also, let your students know, we are a very peculiar kind of country and where the latest technology and conventional technologies, they go hand in hand. Bullock cart in this country still happens to be popular. Bicycle still happens to be mode of transport for almost 50% of the people of this country. Okay. No doubt we have Boeing uh, 787, uh, 777, but we we do have access to latest uh, litho printing and so many uh, uh, printing uh, techniques, but then still that letter press is still popular. Okay. So remember this thing, this kind of mentality, ultimately, when it comes to uh, uh, basing entrepreneurial opportunity, because we are the people who are going to uh, face this problem of latest technology and conventional technology going hand in hand, that opens up avenues for so many servicing enterprises. So old products, they have to be serviced. And when we talk about service, Probably that's one of the reasons why is it uh, the Indian service sector has uh, really expanded a lot. Okay. And then also remember vast uh, Indian population, they tend to imitate each other. And because people tend to imitate, so this is something which gives birth to so many spurious products, so many duplicate products. One may not afford quality, but one may uh, would definitely like to have something, you know, something which looks like that. Okay. So that's why you find uh, this thing good scope for uh, even we talk of quality okay no doubt we should be aiming at quality but at the same time we got to keep in mind the requirement of the customer and the affordability of the customer and uh, uh, ultimately as an entrepreneur we have to produce something which is needed 
by the client in the marketplace. So these are some of the peculiarity which need to be kept in mind while, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, guiding our potential entrepreneurs. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have uh, uh, discussed with you the basic concept of entrepreneurship, concept of self-employment. We try to define entrepreneurship. We try to even define the concept of intrapreneurship. I have discussed with you what should be the strategy if we have to promote entrepreneurial competency within our student and if we have to divert some of your uh, uh, students uh, towards entrepreneurship or intrapreneurship. So what is it? Uh, how is it we should go about it? All we have discussed. So now in case there are some questions, do let me know.